So, like Julia said, we're going to have a small pause before we have the last couple of pitches. And it's a very sweet pause, so this is meeting our last special guest for today. We have a virtual conversation to Greg Papadopoulos. Who's Greg Papadopoulos? Greg is an American engineer and he's executive and a venture capitalist. So in 2010, he joined the world's biggest venture capital fund, that's New Enterprise Associates, and he joined as a venture partner, so he knows about investment. Uh, before that, he already had 20 years experience in entrepreneurship, academia, technology, and he once was the CTO of Sun Microsystems. Greg, are you with us? Can you hear us? Yeah. Vielen Dank für die Vorstellung. Oh. <laughs> es ist mir eine große Freude, heute Abend hier sprechen zu dürfen. Aber keine Sorge, den Rest mache ich in Englisch. Your German is spotless. You can totally do this, but I'm not going to force you to, because I know that it's not too easy. Greg, I, I was wondering, like, could you tell us the story about your in investor's story, like how you got into it and introduce yourself like at full length? Certainly, and I, um, I also have a, a brief presentation here, Bianca, that uh, takes a slice of, uh, you know, what what we're looking at now in uh, across the broad portfolio that we do at NEA that that lines up with Europe. But you you gave a a, a really wonderful background for me, and I appreciate it. I am um, my interests are are really the intersection of maybe hard tech, deep tech, and um, uh, uh, society, uh, and, and really using all the, uh, the tools that we have to, to go make the world a better place. Um, so should I dive into, to this presentation, Bianca, would that be helpful? Okay, here I go. <laughs> um, this, as I said, this is really a, a slice of something that we're, we've been looking at that involves uh, a, a number of companies that um, in, uh, we've invested in in Europe. And it's, it's a basic question of, uh, you could look at this from an IoT side or uh, another side of the world, but it's basically um, asking why we are not able to write software for things that are really about the digitalization and the transformation of the world, uh, things about our environment or about uh, making uh, fishing sustaining or getting trains to run on time or having a, an emergency responder uh, come to you before you, you call them. And of course, the, the, the really simple reason why these are hard to write is because you don't have the data, right? And if, if you take a, a step back uh, and think about uh, you know, the world that we live in and how much of that world is actually uh, connected to the world that we 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 write our software, the world of atoms and bits, and our computing and networking is the the connectivity between the two. Um, if you if you look historically, uh, there really it's been pretty weak coupling, right? It's been our input surfing websites and clicking on things or entering data and um, being able to peer through displays to see, see the response. So historically, it's been hard to write that kind of software because um, simply we did not have uh, the information to build it on. But we do know this revolution now of, you know, our, our mobiles are, uh, you know, they're a sensor platform. They're also, you know, have an extraordinary wireless network behind it the, that was actually pioneered in Europe with, with GSM. And, um, and so that connectivity now lets us build these really rich models and, and in fact lead to something unexpected, like who would have thought that just having your, your mobile in your car could allow someone to, to generate really useful information like traffic conditions back to us. So finally, you know, the, 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 the excitement that, that we all feel around autonomy and uh, automation robotics is really the closing of the loop, right? So we, we not only can measure and build these models, but we can actually do something about it, right? We can, we can change uh, and affect our world. And so kind of back to these questions is that, you know, why can't we write this software? And um, I'm gonna look at two of these, right? And uh, both are, 
or European example, starting with getting trains to run on time, um, which I, I think uh, many people are, are, are quite interested in. Um, you know, and, and people I'm sure are familiar with uh, uh, Konix, which is a Munich-based company that is just doing profound things and starting with, uh, yes, uh, uh, doing predictive maintenance of uh, railway switching points, but actually learning so much in the process and their models are getting so rich that they're in a position to fundamentally digitalize and transform uh, railway operations. Um, in in a uh, uh, related area, um, looking at at uh, fisheries management, uh, we have a company Aquabyte uh, that's principally in in Bergen, Norway, with uh, uh, assistance from the states. But but basically drops cameras into the pens and the fjords of Norway and and watch the fish and and let farmers know things about fish health and their management and biomass that. Uh, they'd never really been able to, to continuously know before and to, to lead to a much more sustainable way of, of harvesting fish. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something um, uh, perhaps a, a really rather controversial bit that I don't think either one of those startups uh, would succeed in the US. And, and, and the reason is um, to, to really build those into great companies, you need the context of the domain you're working in. You need that to be able to recruit the employees and the advisors and the build your board, to be trusted by those customers, to be understood by us, sources of capital. Um, and uh, in the US, you know, the, the sort of manufacturing, industrial, and predominant agricultural uh, parts of the country are really in the middle. And uh, most of the VC activity are, are uh, on the borders. And so, um, whereas in Europe, we see Really, the uh, uh, you know it's much denser and much more history of of all of those parts of society working together, and there's a uh, obviously a much deeper cultural view of what it means to to be sustainable. Uh, and I thought I would just end here by looking, focusing in on just looking at comparing California and Germany, which are roughly about the same size. Um, they uh, uh, the economies are. Uh, you know, 3 billion in California, 4 billion uh, in Germany, uh, Germany about twice the number of people and twice the number of engineers, um, both great universities. Interestingly, Germany gets higher ranks for entrepreneurship from uh, US uh, publication, US News, uh, than the US in general. But here I see the opportunity. There's 10 times the amount of venture funding going into California than Germany. And I see that as an opportunity. It means that that Germany is underserved. But I will say, uh, you know, the most important compare and contrast to me is, you know, uh, we have good beer and great wine and you guys have good wine and really great beer. And I, I think that's just, uh, these, these just belong together. Um, and then finally, and just to remind people, uh, this is just talking about a segment of NEA where we really are a com country, company that, uh, likes to get involved with companies very early uh, uh, by hopefully by series A and then continue with them through their entire lifetime and be able to put a lot of capital to work and, and really go change, make companies that, uh, that go change the world. And uh, with that, vielen Dank. I hope that was a, a good... Uh, uh, Greg, that was spectacular that was like super charming and so informative so basically all my questions are already answered but i'm still going to ask you a few to dive deeper um so you invest in germany and in europe can you like describe us what made you do it so what makes europe interesting to you and is there maybe a specific sector industry sector that is stronger in europe than in the us well, as I as I had said and pointed out here, certainly, and and when we focus in on uh, you know the DAC region, just uh, the deep culture of uh, advanced manufacturing, engineering, uh, design, um, sort of that that intersection uh, is is uh, uh, really really just a special place. And, and so we, we look at that, obviously transportation, you know, Omeo is another investment we have in Berlin. And, uh, you know, there's the context of things like Deutsche Bahn, you know, really the thought leader for, for rail around the world. 
uh, and obviously Codex in that space. <laughs> Greg, all my questions, like they're all, I'm running out of time already. I would like to spend an evening with that conversation. But let me ask you one last one, so you need to give a short answer. So at the yeah. last uh, uh, Tech Founders Demo Day, the founders had the chance to interview Andreas von Bechtholzheim. And he said that the reason why Silicon Valley is so successful is that it's so competitive. So my question is, do you see a region in Europe that could be on the way to be equally competitive? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I, you know, we're certainly seeing, we're very attracted to uh, Berlin and uh, München. I, I think it's just, uh, you're, you're really seeing the, the ecosystem. I mean, I was really impressed with the Helmut's, uh, uh, you know, drive and imagination this morning. And, and the, you know, like 10% of the deal flow, you know, coming through Untenema Tum uh, is, is really spectacular. That's, that's critical mass. Okay, sweet. That gives me space for a last question. So I want to draw like the bigger picture of like global dynamics here. So there has been changes from like Chinese investors, American investors. How do you see the dynamics from these different streams of investment come into Europe? Well, uh, I'm not an expert on, on that, but uh, I, I will say we're, uh, we see China as uh, an incredibly important part of the world economy. Uh, no, no doubt, and there's, there's really it is a global place, and and we'll all uh, be participating. And, and in many ways, Europe is a is a good way to access uh, uh, China markets um, and and the startups that can cross over between Europe and China. But I would say, for, from our point of view, we don't see competition there. As 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 I pointed out, is it it's it it's we're underinvested in venture in Europe. Right. There should be a lot more going in. And if that's going to come from uh, the U.S. as well as other parts of the world, I, I think that's healthy. Sweet. Healthy. Nice. Greg, I hope that we're going to have you soon in Germany and that we can together improve your German under a beer or a wine or two. <laughs> it, gets, um, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good already. Like, you should use it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for the insight and hope to see you very, very soon. <laughs> Bis bald. <laughs> Wiedersehen. So, hi Greg. Hello. Thank